look at some free body diagrams here. Um, so basically what free body diagrams are is a way to add up all the forces that are acting on an object and also draw them all out so we can see what forces even add up in the first place. All right, so when I've got something that is static, what static means is that an object is not moving. All right, so if this object is not moving, um, what kind of forces are, are acting on it? Well, first of all, if we're not sure where to start, we know for sure gravity is pulling it down. So now if we look at this, all right, and we know that one force is present here, it means that this object is actually going to be accelerating downwards. But it's telling me that it's static, so there must be another force acting on this. Right? Because forces come in pairs. If there's some sort of force pulling it down, there must be also another force pulling it up so that I have a zero newton net force. Because remember, a zero newton net force tells me that an object is static, not moving. All right, so the second one here, um, again, if you're not really sure where to start, realize that gravity is going to be pulling the object down. It's going to be something resisting gravity, and it's these two strings here, these two ropes here, are providing the force of tension to resist the force of gravity. If an object is pushed on a frictionless surface, um, that means we're going to have some sort of applied force. So before we get there, though, again, realize right away automatically don't even don't even have to think about it we know for sure gravity is pulling this object down well if the object is not accelerating through the floor which wouldn't make a whole lot of sense it must be being resisted by something it's the normal force All right it's also being pushed on a frictionless surface so some sort of force being applied to it either direction we don't really know the direction um, that's why I made a comment here on or on the other side so there's a force being applied to one direction. doesn't tell us. But it also does tell us that it's frictionless. So normally we would have the force of friction acting backwards like that. But in this case, we're not going to have the force of friction because it tells us that it is a frictionless surface. Don't really like that problem too much because it's not very realistic. We're always going to have friction on a surface, even if it's like ice with motor oil dumped on top of it. Super, super slippery. Still going to have friction. If it's on outer space, on the other hand, this object we're just traveling through space where really there is no friction, it would continue to travel forever until it ran into something that caused it to change its state of motion to stop. All right, so in all these other problems, again, if you're not sure where to start, just start with gravity. We know that gravity is acting downwards um, in any one of these problems. And then if we've got some strings or ropes, we know that they're going to be providing tension. Um, if an object is static, it means it's not going to be moving. So in this case, if we only had the force of gravity, it would be accelerating through the floor. Common sense would tell us that's not going to happen, but common sense wouldn't tell us that there's, there's a normal force. That's something that's a physics-based concept. And then for the um, sixth one here, sixth problem, we've got a whole bunch of forces present. So again, we know gravity is acting down. It's very tempting, and a lot of students, what they'll do is they will put force of gravity acting in this direction. But careful, force of gravity is always acting down. Even if we're at an angle, it would be super weird if the force of gravity changed direction. Um, and then the other common misconception is that the normal force goes straight up, resists uh, the force of gravity, but that's not the case. The normal force is always perpendicular to a surface. So it's going straight up from the surface. In this case, the surface is on an angle, so it's going up on an angle. But still, 90 degrees to the surface, right? perpendicular to the surface there. All right. Um, we also know that this object is being pulled up an incline. So the pulled up an incline is here. You could argue a couple ways that it's the applied force somebody's pulling it up, or you could say it's the force of tension. I'd be fine with either one of those. Um, it shouldn't have to specify with friction because we should just know that there's always going to be friction on a surface. If we're pulling the object up this way, then friction is going to be resisting the pull. So it's going to be in the opposite direction of our applied force. 
Um, if we are traveling at a constant speed, this tends to throw a lot of people. We know that gravity is pulling our object down. We know the normal force is holding it up because it's not accelerating through the uh, floor or anything like that. You guys like my tracing of that line there? Wow, that's terrible. That sucks. All right. Um, but if we are sliding at a constant speed without friction, that doesn't mean that we have to have any forces present because it's very tempting to put in a force that's going in this direction or the other direction, but it's without friction and it's constant speed. So if it's constant speed, what that means is that there's no acceleration or acceleration equals zero. If we think of the force formula, I have some sort of mass, but I know that my acceleration is zero because it's constant velocity, so that means that F is going to equal zero. So you want it to get to be second nature where you look at something that says constant speed and you just automatically know constant speed means no net force because there's no acceleration present. So you should be looking at this problem and be able to say it was sliding at um, sliding without a net force. Well, sliding without a net force would look like this. Normal force holding up, gravity pulling down, no forces side to side. Now if it did say with friction and constant speed, we would have to add in that there's that there's friction going in one direction. Number eight is very similar to that. So pushed on a rough surface with friction. Well again, the forces that we just know are present, for sure it's gravity going down. If I just had this force present, that would mean that the box is accelerating through the surface. We know that that doesn't happen. So there must be another force acting upwards, resisting gravity. And it tells us that it's being pushed. So because it's being pushed, we have an applied force. Doesn't matter which direction, because it doesn't specify. And then it does say that it's a rough surface. And then they're even nice, nicer and say with friction. Rough surface should clue it, away, clue it in that we have the force of friction. And the force of friction is always going to be opposite of the applied force. Um, another way to get this problem correct would be if you switch this force and this force, since we don't know which direction the object's traveling. All right, and then last um, but not least for this um, particular set of problems, we know that our object's static. So in other words, it's not moving. Now, if this object only had the force of gravity be accelerating through the ramp, so we know that that's not possible, but there must be something resisting gravity. So a lot of people are very tempted to say, well, there's something resisting gravity going up. And that's true, but the normal force is acting perpendicular to the surface, so it's like, well, what force is resisting gravity? Remember, we have to break our forces down into components. So this normal force, really, this is the result. Some of that normal force is acting in the x, or sorry, the y direction. Some of this normal force is acting in the x direction. So the portion of the normal force that's acting in the y direction is really what's resisting gravity. Then if we look at the force of friction, well, my box wants to slide down in this direction. So why doesn't it slide down in that direction? It's because I have a force of friction present. So friction is going to be holding this object, or holding this box back. So the three forces that are present are force of gravity down, normal force off at an angle because it's perpendicular to my surface, and then the force of friction is always parallel with my surface. All right, last problem here. Um, this is quite a bit more complex than just drawing out the free body diagrams. Now we're going to stick some math to it, too. So we know that a laptop cart is being pushed uh, forward with a force of 75 newtons along the floor. So we have an applied force of 75 newtons. Um, along a rough floor, having a force of friction of 15 newtons. So the rough floor is telling us that we have friction. And then it specifically tells us our friction is 15 newtons, going in that direction. Gravitational force of Earth on the laptop cart is 750 newtons. It's just a fancy way of saying what its weight is. Right? Force of gravity is the same thing as weight. And then it doesn't tell me, I'm sorry, it does tell me 
that the floor is exerting a force of 750 newtons upwards. It really doesn't even have to tell me that to know this. And because we know if the laptop car isn't flying through the floor, isn't accelerating through the floor, then the normal force must be present. So they actually don't need to tell us this in the problem. We should know that second hand, second nature. Um, now we're drawing the free body diagrams. So that's what we did. And give the forces that are present here. So we know that if gravity is pulling it down with 750 newtons worth of force, normal force is acting up with 750 newtons worth of force. There is a zero newton net force in the up and down direction, which makes sense. It's not jumping up. It's not flying through the, the floor either. Um, now we have to look at net forces from side to side. Well, the applied force is 75 newtons. Force of friction is 15 newtons. So that means that we are pushing it in the rightward direction with 60 newtons worth of net force because 75 or 15 of these 75 newtons is going to be resisted by friction. So our net force is 60 newtons forward.